as we age, our bodies have a harder time fighting off infections. In a study published in the Journal of Immunology, a local research team has found a key to understanding why that is. Yanko Nikolic Zugic, the chair of the University of Arizona Department of Immunobiology and co-director of the Center on Aging, is here to tell us more. Yanko, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Alan, for having me. What happens to our bodies and our immune systems as we age, Yanko? So the immune system is a highly connected immune system. Uh, system. It has a lot of different cells that need to communicate to one another, that need to detect the bugs as they infect us. And uh, it's, it's a very precise and fine-tuned machinery. As we grow old, different facets of that process all go awry a little bit. Not in everybody, not all at the same time, but eventually as we grow older and older, many of these pieces don't communicate to one another very well. They don't detect the bug very well. And one of the greatest challenges for immunologists is to really understand how many defects are there and which defects are the most important. In a way, the analogy that I would make is, you know, you've got a road and there are potholes and some potholes are huge and others are small. You want to figure out which potholes are the most important, which ones are the ones that you need to fill. There is another important analogy with that, and that is that some of these defects, even though very small in the beginning, if they're happening along the same pathway where the cells need to communicate with one another, will augment each other so that a defect that doesn't seem very pronounced at the beginning now gets to be very large and very substantial so that our ability to deal particularly with new infection that we have never seen before, you know, like SARS showed up several years ago, it was very deadly to older people, monkeypox showed up, it was also deadly to older people, West Nile virus, very deadly to older people, you know, all of these little defects can combine to result in a major vulnerability of the older population. And Yanko, when people reach a certain age, will everyone expect to see this situation or is this limited to certain numbers of people? No, and that is actually one part of, uh, I think, an interesting and important discovery that we have made relatively recently. There are some people whose immune systems look very nice and very robust and very good, and that might continue well into their 80s. There are other people whose immune systems don't look quite as good. And uh, then the question is to understand where and how we can intervene the best to fix that immune system and to make sure that infectious diseases are not a problem for our older adult population. Yanka, what are T cells and what role do they play in all this? T cells are one kind of our white blood cells and they are in charge of dealing with infection in a very specific manner. Some of the T cells, the ones that I study a lot, called CD8 T cells, are in charge of dealing with viruses, bacteria, that, and, and, and parasites that hide inside the cell. They are perfectly equipped to um, essentially zap that infection and cure us from the infections that try to camouflage themselves by invading our own cells and dividing inside our own cells. They are the part of the immune system that is undoubtedly the most affected by the process of aging, and that is part of the reason why we study them. Uh, their numbers go down, particularly of the CD8 cells, as we grow old. Their function also goes down. Their ability to move around the body in a coordinated manner is also impaired. And so a lot of what we're trying to do, again, is you know, how to detect that. So if we look, as you said, some people will not experience this as a problem. If we take our older adult population, can we stratify them? Can we figure out which ones are likely to experience those problems? And for those that are, what is the best way to try to fix it? And Yanko, you published recently. Um, could you tell us please a little bit about your recent research? So what we have explored there is exactly what I'm talking about. So how can we predict who's gonna be reacting worse and who's gonna be reacting better and how can we better understand particularly human immune aging and human T cell aging. And we have discovered that the virus, that there is a virus that many of us carry. We actually tend to carry some viruses with us, not like the flu virus, which infects us and our immune system reacts against it and we kick out the virus. You know, uh, in most of the cases, the virus is gone in a few weeks. There are viruses, unfortunately, that we do not kick out. Herpes viruses are a whole group of viruses that are very well adapted to infect us and then to stay, to hide inside our 
cells and not and our immune system cannot kick them out. Cytomegalovirus or CMV is one such virus and it's very prevalent. About 60 to 70 percent of our population has it and as we grow older even larger proportions of the people have it. And around the world there are nations where 90 percent or even 100 percent of the people will be infected with this virus. This virus has, uh, is, is a master stealth um, you know, manipulator of the immune system. It reactivates a little bit in different parts of our body. The immune system goes and beats it back and then the virus goes dormant and hides again only to come up somewhere else. That is sort of like a dance between the virus and the immune system and we were fascinated by it because that dance obviously goes throughout our aging. Uh, there are connections with cytomegalovirus or CMV and some bad outcomes like you know you can, you're, you can expect to have more uh, heart disease and, 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 and blood vessel disease if you have CMV and there are other adverse things that, that this virus does. And we've discovered that our immune system ages completely differently if you have CMV as opposed to when you don't. And those are now, this is now giving us markers that, that will allow us to fix the immune system differently whether you have CMV or not. There are also people that are very good at controlling their CMV with relatively low resources, but in many people CMV just occupies the attention of the immune system so that this immune system is no longer able to deal with some other infections. So are, th are there ways to protect the more elderly people from these long-lasting uh, diseases that are under the surface then? Well, we're working on that very hard, but I think that, you know, uh, if we can understand why some people can protect themselves very well or use only a little bit of their immune system to deal with CMV and others don't, I think this will hold the key. More importantly, as we think about, you know, getting the, 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 the immune system that is, that is less robust, now we know that in some cases we can actually try to generate new vaccines to try to, to improve and boost the immune system and the reactivity of the immune system to the vaccine because it's the immune system that will see the vaccine and then be able to defend us against real infection down the line. And then in those, there, there are also cases where we just don't have enough T cells to deal with this. And in that case, we must actually try to do something else, which is to rejuvenate the immune system, to go to the factories that produce T cells that, that have died down or have winded down their production when we were young and try to reawaken them. So this is a very fascinating area of rejuvenation of the immune system that we also work on and that this research is going to enable us to do better and in a more targeted fashion. And you mentioned the rejuvenation of the immune system. Where do we stand in that? Is that something that we'll be able to uh, see in a year, 10 years, five years, 20 years? Do you have any feel for that, Yanko? Uh, my, my, my bet would be 10 years, five to 10 years, because I think that, uh, you know, there, there's already a lot of published, a lot of understanding, a lot of knowledge. It's not as simple as we thought in the beginning. We thought that there will be some magic bullets that we can use, like a single drug that will rejuvenate the whole of the immune system. If we go back to the beginning of our conversation when I told you that there are many defects, there are also many defects in terms of making new T cells. And so we need to understand those defects. There's at least three right now that we know and that we're working on delineating and we need to fix each one of them separately, put it together, and then we should have the rejuvenation. But I do not believe that it's going to be more than 10 years before we're able to do that. And Yanka, when, when someone's immune system is, is compromised at, at, when they become elderly, are vaccines such as flu vaccines less effective and what can be done about that? They're very much less effective. So again, uh, the efficacy of the flu vaccine in the population over 65 is only between 17 and 51%. Now, the most important thing is that this doesn't mean that people should not take that vaccine. Everybody should take the vaccine because it provides at least some protection, but that protection is much worse than it was when we were younger. The research that we have done now should actually allow us to go to the next phase and do the predictions and figure out based on the profile, based on the CMV status, based on the T cell status, we should be able to predict which people will react well to the vaccine as it is now. They should get the existing vaccine. People that are not likely to react need to get different vaccines. There is this high dose flu vaccine. It's not the greatest invention around. We simply give people four times as much of the flu vaccine as we did in the past. But we now have a much, much better way to, to or ways to, to improve the vaccine by juicing up 
the vaccine itself so that it would essentially provide the giddy up for the T cells that are around. And so a whole section of our population should get a modified vaccine that we're working on. It doesn't still exist on the market, but there's a lot of research, including in our own lab and at the Center on Aging that we're doing to, to get it there. And then there will be some people that will be unlikely to respond to the vaccine, no matter how good the vaccine is, because they simply don't have the cells. And that is where rejuvenation is really going to be the key issue. That is where we need to go and try to get the factories to make new T cells and B cells and other components of the immune system that we might need. And Yanka, we have about 30 seconds left. Uh, as people live longer, we have more aged people. Is this going to be sort of like a medical crisis? It will be if we don't do something different. We have wonderful interventions in animals that prolong not only the lifespan, but also the health span. And we need to really explore that very much because right now as a nation, we're not investing enough in that research. That's the only thing long-term that's going to help us. In the meantime, there's a lot of better models of care that we can implement, but it's going to be more or less a series of band-aids. Well, Yanko, I want to thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Alan. It was a pleasure to be here.